Weekly Spooky is brought to you by our generous supporters on Patreon. Get access to exclusive podcasts, videos, and more for as little as $1 a month when you go to weeklyspooky.com and click on the Patreon link. Your support has gotten us to 100 episodes, so join up today and help us create another 100 and beyond. Head over to weeklyspooky.com and join the Patreon. Wednesday. It's October, so why not a little spooky in your weekly? I'm your host and narrator, Henrik Kuto, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Because at Weekly Spooky, it's eternally nighttime. Before we present the new terror tale, I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for checking the podcast out. October is, of course, our busy season, and if you're enjoying what you're hearing, just remember we go all year long. We bring you a little taste of Halloween 52 weeks a year. So make sure to subscribe and leave us a rating on your favorite podcast app. It really helps us out. And if you really love what we're doing, go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon and become a backer today and help us bring the spooky every week and get lots of other cool stuff. This week, my friends, we're headed back to Strickfield, the first town of Weekly Spooky. A town that absolutely loves Halloween and loves a good horror film. Now, I've been to many retro drive-in movie theaters, and there's something charming and delightful about going back in time, if only in your mind and your heart at those events. But Strickfield's drive-in is a little bit different, and uh, it doesn't take kindly to those who hate the reason for the season. So let's get to the story right now, and I'll be back afterward to talk at you a little bit more. But for now, my friends, gather close, get comfortable, and let's listen to the story. Retro Halloween Weekend by Rob Fields. Strickfield is always a major hotspot for the two major holidays of the year. When the Christmas season comes around, each and every house is decorated to the max. There are many events that go from the day after Thanksgiving until the end of Christmas. The Christmas season is the second biggest event of the two. The biggest event is Halloween. Much like the Christmas season, each and every house is decorated to the max. There are many more events that take place for Halloween than during the Christmas season. What sorts of events happen during the entire month of October in Strickfield, you may ask? Many parties take place at the local businesses. Denoyer's Grill, the popular restaurant in Strickfield, usually picks up more customers seemingly every day. There are plenty of haunted attractions around the area. Though, you may want to avoid the backwoods areas if you head out to these attractions. All of the bars are open for parties, which brings many of the students in from Strickfield University. Strickfield also has the two biggest events that are greatly talked about for the Halloween season. The first one is their trick-or-treat nights, which take place on both October 30th and on the 31st. The tradition here is that anyone can go door-to-door and collect candy without any judgment. It doesn't matter how old you are or where you come from. In fact, people come from miles away just to experience this event, and there seem to be more and more trick-or-treaters here each and every year, which was why the event was extended to two days. 
There's even going to be an issue on the November ballot to extend the event to a full week. The second of the two biggest events for Halloween takes place at the Strickfield Drive-In Theater. On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of each weekend in October, there are triple features. Monday through Thursday features a horror double feature. Each night, the drive-in sells out, even on Sundays and weeknights, which are school nights. However, on Halloween weekend, the drive-in hosts special marathons in which four films are screened. But... On Halloween night itself, the drive-in hosts an extra special marathon in which they screen four secret movies, which aren't revealed until they hit the screen. Only the manager knows what the titles are. The event sells out just the same. This year, Halloween night will be on a Sunday as part of Retro Halloween Weekend. It's Saturday now, Halloween Eve, that I'm seeing Charity Mirren on TV at the drive-in giving a speech. As it turns out, the Strickfield Drive-In Theater is in need of some major renovations. Really? You just know the theater makes damn good money. The owners can't raise the funds to renovate the fucking place? Charity and her girlfriend Micah Collins were at the drive-in for a summer triple feature event and had heard about the theater's peril. Not only did Charity and Micah raise the money for the renovations, but whatever was left over went to a charity of the owner's choice, which was the Strickfield General Hospital Children's Ward. Charity is standing at the podium with Micah next to her and talking about how she and Micah heard that the drive-in was in trouble and might not reopen for next year's season. She talks about how the former drive-in location on the other end of the village went to hell. The old Strickfield Drive-In Theater location is on the very same road here as this current location, Charity explains. The old theater closed down in 1987 after hosting the final Retro Halloween Weekend event there. But now, as we get to the end of the Halloween season, the Strickfield Drive-In Theater will finish this final weekend with the traditional four, four secret movies. And that's both nights this year. Charity laughs a little, though, after tonight, they won't be a secret so much. Then Charity really smiles. Micah and I would like to thank all of you who donated. Because of your donations, this drive-in theater will continue to operate for seasons to come, which means there will be many, many more special nights, just like the Halloween season and retro Halloween weekend. Her statement was followed by lots and lots of applause. Charity lets Micah speak. Also, many of you requested to have actual vendors here for Retro Halloween Weekend. Well, consider that wish. Granted, there'll be plenty of vendors here to sell whatever your horrific little hearts desire, including even more scary movies. This is going to be a Retro Halloween Weekend none of us will ever forget. We promise. So we'll likely see many of you here this weekend. And remember, the four secret movies will be playing on this screen here, both tonight and tomorrow night. Very few tickets are still available, so don't wait. Happy Retro Halloween Weekend, and Happy Halloween! More fucking loud applause. Yeah, everybody's all happy and excited, ain't they? Fuck you, Charity. I'm lying on my bed and shaking, with seething hatred for my older sister by a little over a year. I've had to watch you on TV ever since I heard that you and Micah were doing all those charity drives together. You two raised funds for the expansions to Strickfield Elementary School. You even raised funds to get the Strickfield Fire Department new fire engines. I heave and heave with hatred, and now realize I've tightened my fists so much that I feel myself bleeding from where my long fingernails have dug into my palm. Still shaking with hatred, I stand up and scream at the top of my lungs. I'm heaving again. My hatred for you will never stop, Charity. I march right out of the house and head down the road to my friend Sienna Michael's house. When I get there, I open the front door and walk right in. Sienna's parents just look at me as I disappear upstairs and open the door to Sienna's room. Sienna's lying on her bed with her headphones on, 
listening to heavy metal records. When Sienna sees me, she pulls her headphones off. Destiny! Hey, babe, what's up? I sit down next to her. Why does she do it, Sienna? Why does Charity have to make our family look so bad? Sienna listens to me bitch about everything that happened at the drive-in, along with all the other charities my sister scored funds for. Mom and Dad disowned Charity, and it's like this, this... I glare at Sienna. She's so goddamn happy-go-lucky. She even has a girlfriend, a girlfriend. I raise my finger. And every time Charity raises money for something, Mom and Dad hear about it. Know what they do? I stand up and scream. They take it out on me! I sit down again. Sienna sees a tear run down my cheek and tries pulling me to her to hug me. But I push her away and quickly wipe away the tear. I won't show weakness. When Mom heard on the radio that Charity had saved the drive-in theater, she turned and slapped me hard across the face and told me to get out of her sight. I tightened my fists again. I hate you, Charity. I really, really hate you. Just then, Sienna's door opens. Her parents come into the room. What is going on up here? Her dad points right at me. You just barge into our house. Then you come up here and start screaming at Sienna? Dad, she didn't, Sienna tries to say. I stand up quickly and scream at her father. Fuck off. Before he can respond, I shove right past Sienna's parents and move downstairs. They hear the door slam shut behind me. It's not long before Sienna comes after me, likely against her parents' wishes. Destiny, come on! Don't be like this! Mom and Dad said you're not welcome at our house anymore. Fuck your parents. I yell. I'm ready to say the same thing to Sienna, but I quickly stop myself. Sienna's my only friend in this world. I just look ahead. And fuck you, Charity. We sit down on a bench outside of Gunter Square and talk about things. Sienna really tries to calm me down, but I'm so full of hate. I can still feel Mom slapping me across the face so hard that I fall and hit the floor just as hard. I keep feeling her hand slapping my face again and again. All because of you, Charity. Suddenly I stand up. I've got it, Sienna. I know exactly how to get my revenge on Charity. Um, what are you talking about? Sienna stammers. I turn to her. Retro Halloween weekend. Tomorrow night is Halloween. It doesn't matter what day of the week Halloween falls on. It doesn't matter where it is or what the event is. Halloween is, without a doubt, the biggest moneymaker in all of Strickfield. I sigh a sinister sigh. That means the drive-in will have its biggest moneymaker tomorrow. The banks won't be open for them to take their cash to and deposit it. And there are no night deposits at any of the banks around here. I should know, because our family owns all the banks. I sit back down. That means the drive-in keeps the money locked on the premises. Then I shriek with delight. The charity money will also be there. Sienna looks at me, uneasily. Um, you're not thinking of... Oh, but I am, Sienna. I assure her. I have a plan. Sienna still looks uneasy. That's stealing, Destiny. I laugh. <laughs> Why, yes. Yes, it is. Sienna keeps giving me that uneasy look and pissing me off. Fuck off. I'm doing this. Sienna lowers her head and seems ready to cry. I hate it when you yell at me. Now I feel awful. Again, Sienna's my only friend. I hug her. I'm sorry, I say sincerely. I won't involve you in my plan. But Sienna suddenly hugs me back. Tightly. Stop. You can't do this by yourself. You need me. When we come apart... I wait for her explanation. I love you and I won't let you do this by yourself. I know I can't talk you out of it, so I'm going to help you. I consider her now. Then I sigh. I'm such a bitch to you and you still want to help me? 
Because I love you, dummy. You're my best friend. I only have one. I sigh again and whisper, I love you too, and I'm sorry for how I treat you. We hug again. What's the plan? Sienna asks. I compose myself. Okay, we'll meet at the drive-in tomorrow night and do the marathon. Plenty of time to scope everything out. We'll wait until the final movie plays before we grab the cash. I've never been to the drive-in. Where is it? Sienna asks. Me neither. I take out my smartphone and look it up. 1313 Harlow Road. Here's a pic. You can't miss it. It looks like it's ready to fall apart from the outside. I look at the pic again and realize something else. Hey, it's actually not far from Denoyer's Grill. How about we meet there and get shakes before we hit the drive-in? Great idea, Sienna agrees, enthusiastically. I smile for her. Okay, babe. See you tomorrow at Denoyer's. It's Halloween night. After we have shakes at Denoyer's Grill, we leave the still-packed vintage diner and make our way to the drive-in. We pass a lot of trick-or-treaters. Like I said, Strickfield is the place to trick-or-treat, period. It's not long before we see the drive-in. The old sign out front is brightly and dully lit at the same time and reads, Welcome to Retro Halloween Weekend, in red letters. Suddenly, two cars appear from out of nowhere and speed right past us, just weaving all over the fucking road. Sienna and I quickly find ourselves on our asses. I quickly get up. As I help Sienna to her feet, I yell at the cars. Hey, jerks! Speed kills! I'm okay, Sienna assures me when she's on her feet again. Assholes, I mutter. Come on, let's get inside the drive-in. We can just go around and jump the fence. This way, we won't have to pay shit to get in. As we walk to the fence, I have an evil thought. You know, once we rob this place, Charity's going to hear all about it. It'll be a big fuck you to her. Sienna glances at me. Can we go over the plan again? Sure. I explain the plan over again. I'm finished when we reach the fence. Got it, babe? Yeah, I I got it, Sienna assures me. Sounds good. We climb up and over the fence and drop to the other side. I quickly look around. We're good. Nobody saw us. We walk across the gravel lot, pass one car after another, noticing the speakers people are hanging on the windows for inside sound. Don't they broadcast the sound through the car radios here? (laughs) No wonder this fucking place needs renovations. I had no idea retro Halloween weekend meant retro cars, too, Sienna says. Yeah, I noticed that, too. I point to the concession stand. Okay, let's get refreshments and make ourselves look like we're here for the event. We enter the concession stand. Wow, I'm surprised by what we're seeing. Everything in here looks vintage, too, Sienna. Well, maybe being retro is the theme here, Sienna offers. I mean, everything's supposed to be getting renovated, right? I smile wickedly. Not after we're through here tonight. We order food. Fuck, even the prices are vintage. Everything's so cheap. Not only that, the food actually looks and smells a lot better, and you actually get more. We head out and sit at a picnic table and wait for the first feature to start. I bite into my quarter-pound hot dog. These are the best fucking hot dogs I've ever eaten. The marathon starts and the PSAs are playing. Some trailers follow. Then the first movie of the night begins to play. Carnival of Souls. Something doesn't feel right. I can't put my finger on it. We watch the movie. It's cloudy outside and the wind starts to pick up. Intermission comes. We buy more food and come back to the picnic table. The second feature is Night of the Living Dead. Christ, are they going to be playing black and white movies all fucking night? My question is answered one more time when they play The Last Man on Earth for round three. Really? These are the big super secret mystery movies? We hit the concession stand again. 
the last movie plays, which is called Halloween Destiny. During the other movies, Sienna and I would get up and look around. We confirm our plan to get the money and are ready to make our move. As we get up, we look at the movie. This one's not familiar. Yet, Sienna and I feel compelled to watch it. This black and white movie starts out with a vengeful, mean, rich girl who hates her older sister for being kind-hearted. She meets up with a friend and gets her to help her with a revenge plot. The two of them met up at a diner and eat before they walk to the drive-in and climb the fence to get in. It's not long before the girls hear the rumble above them and know it's going to rain soon. Suddenly, we hear a low rumble just above us. What the fuck, Sienna? It's supposed to be windy tonight. Just windy, not raining. In the movie, the girls take shelter underneath another picnic table that has a large umbrella over it as it begins to pour down rain. At the same time, it pours down rain on us. Shit! Sienna shrieks. Damn, it's, it's so cold! Unlike the film, there are no picnic tables with umbrellas. In spite of the rain, the drive-in patrons, both in the film and in the real world, are still in their cars and watching the movie. I take Sienna's hand and lead her back to the concession stand. The workers are a guy and a girl about our age. They both look a little off somehow. I know it's Halloween night and people usually dress up, but still, Sienna and I both look at each other as if we're thinking the same thing. Nice night for this event, huh? The girl asks us. All dark and stormy. She quickly raises her hands in front of her, making claws. Spooky! Goes great with the movie, the guy adds. Looks like you both got soaked. I glare at the guy. No shit, Sherlock. The guy points at us. Please refrain from using profanity. I raise both of my middle fingers. Eat me. The girl smirks. Sienna, feeling uneasy. Um, Destiny? That wasn't very nice, the girl says. Now, I'm ready for a confrontation. Oh, you want to throw us out? The guy and the girl laugh. Oh, no, 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 the girl says. We would never do that. On the contrary. When the guy and the girl both come out from behind the concession stand, we both shriek. The girl's uniform top is torn open at the bottom, and her stomach and intestines are hanging out. The guy looks even worse than her and seems to be broken in many places. You're both going to be here for a very, very long time. The guy croons. We were on our way to the Halloween formal at Strickfield High School, the girl cries. We were hit by a drunk driver and we crashed into that big tree just outside the entrance here. She gestures to both herself and her boyfriend. Drinking and driving kills. She points to us. You two should know. The guy adds, And now you're both here with us. Enjoy the show, because it will always go on. The guy and the girl both laugh long peals of horrible, horrible laughter. We both scream and run back out into the cold rain. Oh, fuck this shit. We're out of here. Damn right, Destiny. The lightning flickers enough to light up both the sky and the entire drive-in. When the thunder finally crashes... It actually sounds just the way it did in the older horror movies. Just the same, we both scream again when we see the people in the car directly in front of us. The couple look similar to the zombies featured on the Return of the Living Dead poster in the concession stand. The lightning flashes again and shows us how hard the rain is pouring. 
We scream again when we see that the cars are just full of... dead people? And the vintage cars themselves don't look so nice anymore. You'd think this place was a fucking junkyard now. We turn and run and see that Halloween Destiny continues to play on the screen. Those girls in the movie seem to be in the same predicament we're in. Sienna slaps my arm. Let's climb back out over the fence. I got a better idea. We're right by the front entrance. We run to where the cars came in. When we reach the admission booth, a man with half of his face missing and several broken teeth steps out and points at us. The rules specifically state that no one leaves until the final feature has ended. Back you go. We scream as the wind suddenly picks up and drives us both back into the main area of the drive-in. We're both completely soaked. We move to try and climb out over the fence. But now the fence is... A fucking brick wall. It's much too high and too slippery from the rain to scale. Then there's the fact that the wall's covered with thorny vines and moss. Just then, a security guard approaches us. When the lightning flashes, the guard has rotting flesh everywhere. Even his uniform looks ragged and dull. You girls need to stop causing problems and just watch the movies, he gurgles. We scream again and run. What are we going to do? Sienna cries. What the fuck can we do? I shriek. How the fuck is this shit even happening? Right there! Grab them! It sounds like the gurgling security guard again. Suddenly, we're grabbed by two big, hulking creatures and forced to our knees. Now the guy and the girl running the concession stand approach us. The manager's here, the guy says. He wants to have a very serious talk with the both of you. I am already here. A new, disembodied voice says. We both scream again when we see who's suddenly standing in front of us. There's no mistaking the figure with the long shroud and the sickle. I gasp in terror when I see the skeletal hand holding that sickle. Then the figure points to the screen. Watch. Watch, Destiny Mirren, Sienna Michaels. Watch the events that have brought you two before me. We're forced to finish watching Halloween Destiny. The girls in the movie are at the exact point where we are now, except now we see a flashback that shows that both girls had been hit by cars with drunken fraternity boys in them as they were nearing the drive-in. Yes, Death tells us, you too have perished. You will wait your final judgment from me now. But before I render judgment, you shall finish your movie marathon. And we have bonus features just for the two of you. The Hulks pick us up and seat us at our picnic table. The fifth feature called Destiny's Life plays for us. Here, I see the horrible truth. My parents never even wanted me. They were happy with just having charity. Then shit happened, and I was born. I had tried doing everything I could to please my parents, but I was treated like shit by them time and time again in favor of charity. Death speaks to me. It would be your early life that would cause your unbridled hatred for your older sister that tainted your soul. This is what ultimately brought you before me. Destiny Mirren. The sixth feature plays, which is called Destiny's Friend. This showed the time from where Sienna and I had met. We were just kids. Sienna kept following me around on the playground at school like a lost little puppy. No matter how many times I yelled and screamed at her to just go away, she kept following me around. Finally, I gave in. If we hang out after school once, you'll leave me alone? I offered. Sienna nodded eagerly. I met Sienna after school and hung out with her. By the time the day was over, I decided that I actually... liked Sienna. Okay, fine. You can be my friend. We watch as I could sometimes be verbally abusive towards Sienna. She even cry a little when she knew I wasn't watching. 
The movie even shows the day before when I just walked into Sienna's home uninvited and unannounced. I look at Sienna and feel heavy remorse inside now. It's too much. I've become very weak and start to cry. I'm sorry, Sienna. I choke out. I'm so sorry I made you come along with me on this. I'm so sorry about everything. Sienna shakes her head slowly. No, I offered to come with you. You're my best friend. I only have one. I shake my head quickly. I did this out of hatred for Charity. I strive to be everything my parents wanted her to be. But Charity was kind. Very kind. And our parents ultimately disowned her. I thought I would get all the attention Charity used to get. Yeah, I got all the attention. Mom and Dad hated my fucking guts. Mom absolutely refused to touch me before yesterday. She wouldn't even let me hug her. Then she heard about how Charity was doing so much good raising money for all these charities. And Mom hit me. I look death in his vacant space where his face should have been. I did it. It was all me. I came here to steal the money tonight. Punish me. Torture me. Make me burn in hell. But please, let Sienna go. She doesn't deserve this. No! Sienna interjects. I offer myself in exchange for destiny. Let her go. Why would you offer yourself for destiny, Mirren? Death inquires. Didn't you hear me? I told Destiny she was my best friend, and that I only have one. Sienna turns to me. You gave me a chance. You let me be your best friend. You had to have one. I wanted to be it. Death raises his hand. Enough. I have made my decision. We're both scared now as Death looks from her to me. As it turns out, I have two openings I need to fill. He points to Sienna. I charge that you, Sienna Michaels, shall be the new manager of this drive-in theater. By day, you shall live in the mortal world. By night, you shall work here in the afterlife and run my theater for me. Sienna gulps. But I can't run this theater. I, I don't know how. I shall teach you all that you need to know. I offer you this position because I know you will be fair and just towards those who enter the afterlife. Death looks at me now. I shall not claim your soul, Destiny Mirren. It is the events of your life that have poisoned your soul and have caused you to make poor decisions that have brought you to me. It is both your admission of guilt and the selflessness of your friend that have convinced me to give you my other job opening. I'm still crying. Just let Sienna go and I'll do whatever you want. I won't even try to run away. It's okay, Destiny, Sienna replies. I'm staying with you. My decision is final, Destiny Mirren, Death tells me. I have my new theater manager, but your new job shall carry even more responsibilities than hers. And before I know it, Death places his sickle into my hands. What? What? What, what do you want me to do with this? Suddenly... My skin and long blonde hair turn ghastly white. I feel my eyes, lips, and nails also changing, turning black. I also feel powerful, stronger, immortal. You shall be my replacement, Death explains. I have carried souls from the mortal realm to the afterlife since the dawn of time. Now it is time for me to move on, though I shall look in on you from time to time. From this moment on, you shall carry on with my name and my former duties. In addition to bringing souls to the afterlife, 
you shall help those who have tainted souls to change their ways for the better, and perhaps avoid their fates. Then Sienna steps up. Wait! Would you consider granting us the rest of Halloween night? Come on, we can't possibly run away. Not from you. Please. Death considers Sienna's request. Very well. I shall release you both for tonight. Tomorrow evening, both of you shall begin your duties. In the afterlife. Thank you, Sienna says gratefully, for both of us. Suddenly, we find ourselves back in Strickfield on Halloween evening, outside the drive-in. About the time we first got here. Only this time, there is no sign of life whatsoever inside the theater. Sienna moves the sign and examines it. Destiny, could you look up the address again? I take out my smartphone and show Sienna the pic from my search earlier. Here, Sienna looks at it. Oh my god. What? Sienna looks at the sign again. This sign says, 1313 West Harlow Road. So? Sienna shows me my phone. Look closer. The text below this pic says this location is closed. The drive-in we should have gone to is at 1313 East Harlow Road, on the other side of the village. I take my smartphone back and see that Sienna's right. I just looked at the picture for this place. I didn't even read the text below. I'm sad now. This is all my fault. I'm so sorry, Sienna. Sienna takes my hand. Why? You didn't drive drunk and kill us both. That's why we're really in the afterlife now, you know. I consider her. Yeah. I hug Sienna to me. You know what? Let's have some fun. Let's go trick-or-treating. Sienna hugs me back. Then she backs away and looks me over. Black and white, holding a sickle. You'll never need a Halloween costume. I smile at my friend. Thanks. Now, let's go get some candy to take back to the afterlife with us. Sienna shrieks with happiness. Let's go. Some people just won't let death put a kink in their plans, and I gotta respect it. Uh, thank you so much for listening to our story this week, and thank you to Rob Fields for another spooky trip to Strickfield. And I actually saw Rob in person, in the flesh, uh, last weekend at the Cinema Wasteland Horror Movie Expo in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, I had a really good time. It's always good to see Rob, and I hope you enjoyed his story. One of the things I love so much about our program is that every week you're going to get something a little bit different one week you might get a splatter story, another week you might get some kind of a gross-out piece or a straight-up ghost story, and some weeks you might just get a little bit of Halloween horrors and maybe a hint of Charles Dickens. Thanks again for spending a little bit of scary time with us in your Halloween season, and make sure to come back next Wednesday when we'll have a brand new horror tale for you. And please do subscribe or leave a rating on your favorite podcast app. Honestly, please do both. And if you love the Strickfield stories, and I know there are many of you out there who love Rob Field's terrifying fictional town, Strickfield, you can go to weeklyspooky.com and click on store and buy yourself a Strickfield t-shirt. They've just become available. It's an awesome image of the Welcome to Strickfield sign, and it says, A Nice Place to Die. So please check that out at weeklyspooky.com. That's where you can find all the information you could ever need about the show, such as joining our Patreon, which allows us to make the show every single week and has for over 103 episodes. So go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon, and you can become one of our podcast boosters. Speaking of which, a special thanks goes to our podcast boosters this week. It's Gino Lyons, Karen Wiemet, Jeff and George Hilton, Craig Cohen, Rob Fields, our buddy, and Kevin Fry. Thank you all so much much for helping us bring you the spookies every single week but anyway my friends i gotta get out of here i got candy to buy because man when those little demons come to your door boy are they hungry for tricks or treats and i will not be running out of treats so anyway for myself for my producer dan wilder for my composer ray mattis i will talk at you later thank you for listening make sure to find your way back next week 
But for now, you are safe. Trust me. Ha, 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 ha.